Hey, future respiratory therapist. So Christina wants to know about intrapulmonary pressure, intrapleural pressure, and then transpulmonary pressure. And how does that create a difference and how does that change when you're talking about spontaneous breathing versus positive pressure breathing. So we're going to break that down for you here as quickly and as briefly as I can. The first thing you have to understand is what, what these words are referring to. Okay, so when you see the word intrapulmonary, intrapulmonary, I'm just going to shorten it there to keep it short, okay? We're talking about the pressure inside the lungs, okay? So this is the pressure inside of the alveoli, okay? It is roughly 760 millimeters of mercury, okay? Now, when you say intrapleural, Pressure, you're talking about the pressure here inside of the pleural space, that very small space between the visceral and the parietal pleura that creates the intrapleural pressure. Now, it is typically approximately 756 millimeters of mercury, so slightly less than the intrapulmonary pressure. Now, when you do a difference between these two, you see that the difference is minus four, okay? So that is your transpulmonary. is 760 minus 756, and you have a difference of four, okay? So that's what it refers to. Intrapulmonary is inside the alveoli. Intrapleural is in the pleural space, talking about the pressures. And transpulmonary is the difference when you cross those two barriers. Some people may refer to this also as transmural pressure. Okay, so now that's what it is. Now you have to understand that this and these pressures I'm referencing here are at rest. So when there's no air moving in or out of the lungs, then at rest, these are the pressures that exist. Okay, now second part of your question. What's the difference in spontaneous breathing versus positive pressure breathing? Okay, spontaneous breathing happens because upon inspiration, our diaphragm contracts, it moves downward. So this moves downward. As this moves down, it causes the intrapleural pressure to become more negative. Okay, it causes it to decrease even further, which increases the transpulmonary pressure and causes the lungs to fill with air and expand because of the negative, uh, the, the creation of this negative pressure inside of the chest wall. Okay, not inside the alveoli, but in the intrapleural space due to the diaphragm dropping. This is what allows atmospheric gas to now enter the lungs because of the change in the pressure gradient. The pressure here is now greater than the pressure in the intrapleural space and it causes a negative pull in and the lungs expand, they get full, the diaphragm comes back up, pressure restores back to normal and air goes out, okay, along with the natural recoil of the lungs, okay. So that's spontaneous breathing. Now when you put somebody on a mechanical ventilator or um, even uh, say any type of positive pressure breathing okay what you remove from this is this is and this is, don't get me wrong here you can still the diaphragm still contracts and it still creates a negative pull that's how the vent is triggered when a patient is spontaneously breathing on a vent but what makes it different is is that the positive pressure from the machine from the ventilator not the machine but from the ventilator is forcing air in and that makes it positive pressure. If the patient's not breathing at all, the diaphragm is sitting here like this, dying, right? Basically, it's a serious diaphragmatic atrophy happening fairly quickly if patients aren't utilizing their diaphragm. And so it stays put here, but you've got this pressure coming from the ventilator that is pushing air in. So the difference is instead of drawing air in from a negative force with positive pressure ventilation, you have the pushing of air into the alveoli. And that's how it's refer referred to as positive pressure ventilation or positive pressure breathing. Okay? You do that with a mechanical ventilator. Now, the only way you can you can use a mechanical assist device to aid somebody with negative pressure breathing is the chest caress. 
Okay, or the, they used to be called the iron lung. Now they have one like a turtle shell that fits around and creates a seal. And it actually sucks on the chest wall, which creates a negative pull. And air comes in. Okay, so that's the difference. It's, it's not really much more than that. When you break it down, you understand the pressure inside the alveoli. This pressure difference exists. Well, so, so this 756 versus this 760 that creates this, this negative difference between the two exists because the rib cage and the thorax are made up of bones that are, that are circular, right? They're bent inward, and they are naturally trying to expand outward. The lungs will naturally try to deflate. So you have the lungs trying to deflate. You have the ribs expanding outward by nature. They won't just collapse inward. They'll move outward. It's like a bow and arrow. You bow it in, you let go, it'll bow back out, right? That's the same way the ribs function. They create this negative pull by this tension that exists moving outward. And that's what creates this slight negative difference between the pleural space and the alveoli. Without that, our lungs don't function normally. If this becomes disrupted, the intrapleural space becomes disrupted or becomes greater than intrapulmonary pressure, then your lungs are going to collapse, whether it's caused by pleural effusion, which is fluid, or by an increase in air. Both of those are going to collapse lung tissue because your intrapleural pressure is now greater than your intrapulmonary pressure. Okay. Hey, I hope this helps. If you have questions or it doesn't make sense, put them in the comments. If you haven't subscribed, please do so and check out my other videos. Best wishes, guys.